This is a video about being artful in um, interacting with people. So I've, uh, I was um, thinking about this as actually having an interaction with myself, um, contemplating uh, this topic when I was uh, walking home this evening. So I already had a little bit of practice, but um, I'll just point out, first of all, I do have a blemish there on my face. So um, but that's okay. It ties into the whole topic of my conversation today, even though I feel like I'm, I'm back in high school and I'm doing some kind of dorky presentation, which is in fact true. But um, anyway, I think that it's very important um, or it's very powerful uh, to, um, to give way in conversation and to take a curious or even um, a bit of a naive approach. Um, there's um, a certain amount of charm in a little bit of naivete, um, especially if you have um, self-acceptance and dignity to, uh, to go along with it. Um, everybody is, um, you know, subconsciously when, you know, most people are in interactions there's uh, there's a, a kind of a subconscious status seeking that everybody does and you know, i mean we, like we all do it to one extent or another and when somebody shows their vulnerability shows their naivete um people uh, appreciate that and they quite find it quite charming and quite likable and it also gives them permission to you know, I don't have to be so guarded myself and I could, you know, let some of this stuff, uh, you know, my, <laughs> uh, you know, my kind of embarrassing naivete about a few things uh, go. And that's, you know, that that's a huge load off of most people um, to be able to do that. And um, there's... Um, there's a, there, there's a part of you and, you know, you could call it the ego. That's probably the most uh, common uh, parlance for, for describing this thing. But um, um, it's, it's, it's always concerned how, how you come across and it's going to make you uptight in these um, interactions with people. So if you're, you know, you're sitting around, you're having a conversation, you're going out for dinner or, you know, whatever, whatever the occasion may be, um, you know, you get on a topic and it's going to strike at something, right? It's going to strike at, oh, my, your economic status uh, compared to the other people. Or, you know, how clever you are, how funny you are, how much you know about something. And, uh, and you know, the ego, and it's not, it's not a bad thing that the ego does this. Because what the ego is doing is... It's protecting you within the known bounds, right? Um, so, I mean, it's 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 limit it's limited. It's necessarily limited, and it's just um, it's just protecting you. And and it doesn't and it doesn't know that you know it's it's all about proving the status within the the group of people that you're interacting with. Um, it doesn't know that. You know, if you let go of that need, maybe you'll be okay. Maybe people, and in fact, I, I think this is to a large extent true, as I was saying earlier, that people will actually have uh, more admiration for you um, if you're not the person who pipes up and, you know, tries to be the expert, tries to be the funny person, tries to be the person who's the center of attention, has all the best stories, blah, 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 right? Um there's uh, there's a lot of respect actually for uh, for the person who is who is open and curious and just a little bit naive but with that self respect and the self acceptance to go with it. Um, the um, uh, the the uh, the upshot of this as well is that if you know you have to you, you don't get rid of this ego. It's there serving a purpose, but you have to you have to deal with it um, kind of like 
you would uh, discipline like a yappy dog or, you know, if you're dealing with, with like a problematic child or something like that, you just have to kind of deal with it calmly and say, you know, you stand down right now. If you stand down, it's okay. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through this because this is this is just a reaction based on 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 per, on perceptions that um that haven't yet been the boundaries of which haven't yet been tested and if you let that guard down and take a curious approach you might find yourself actually listening to people's st incredible fucking stories and and saying well you know what maybe i'd like to try that you know um, I, I'm, I'm glad that I, I, I heard this person uh, talk about this topic today because I've learned something, you know, and this is, you know, our, our, our interactions with people are, are really, I, th I think, um, the, the, the place where we really expand our own concepts of, of what's possible for ourselves. Because, I mean, when we're all alone, we tend to seek out the type of information. We all have confirmation bias, right? So the type of information that we're seeking, it's usually stuff that we, um, we kind of know the answer to already and we're just looking for that confirmation, right? And that's the, the ego again, um, protecting its boundaries or, or fortifying its boundaries. Um, but you know, you, you, you take this approach over and over again, and then you start having all of the experiences and you start, uh, accumulating the knowledge that, you know, that the ego is so concerned about to begin with, right? But you're, you're doing that by making it stand down, by taming it. And then, you know, ironically, you're also convincing it that um that you that that um you know your your boundaries um can be expanded and and by kind of standing down and and um and letting your yourself kind of be uh, you know taking a back seat um but still being engaged still being engaged by being curious and asking questions you're showing your ego to that you can you can be very good in these situations without having to prove status, without having to play that game, and then you're convincing it because until you put it into practice, there's no reason for it to be convinced. So there's no reason for it to do anything different. So you have to take um, conscious decision to um, to 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 just tame that that voice, tame that little compulsion. Uh, that will make you uptight. That will make you. Oh, I gotta. You know. Oh, no, 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 no. I, 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 I have to be smart. I have to be smart enough. I have to be funny enough. I have to be. You know, whatever it is. Um, you know, my um, my favorite comedian is Norm Macdonald. Uh, the late uh, great Norm Macdonald, and um, he was you know probably smarter than ninety nine percent of the comics out there, um, but his <laughs> he, i mean his humor was savage but um you know it was also very uh when he told jokes it was it was always very naive i mean he's a guy who who read all his classical literature and he, and you hear him get into these philosophical discussions and he just has you know he's brilliant um he could just lay out anybody um, who, who would come to challenge him uh, when it comes to, to intellectual things. But, um, but the, the form that his jokes always, t always take is a, a very stripped down, naive, you know, let's, <laughs> let's take, let's, let's like get rid of all the pretense, all the pretense um, for, from whatever we're talking about and just ask questions like a child would ask. You know, very kind of naive sounding uh, questions, and 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 oddly enough, he would be very good at exposing people, uh, exposing all their complexities and their and their pretense by taking this very kind of like naive approach and asking those kind of like naive childlike questions uh, to people. 
um, <laughs> just uh, to, to make them, you know, kind of considering, well, what the, what the hell, what the hell is this like facade that you're putting up? You know, it's, it's really all a bunch of bullshit. Um, so, so yeah, uh, he was, he was very, he was very good at that. And, uh, he, he also made a point of, of saying that, you know, nobody wants to, no, nobody likes you when, when you're trying to prove that you're smarter than everybody, um, <laughs> than everybody else. You, you know, you have to, um, you know, you have to kind of play that part, play, you know, play the fool a little bit, play, play the fool a little bit. And, um, you know, when you do that, um, not only are, uh, are people going to be a little bit more open to you, um, but, you know, if you play the fool and you're really not the fool, then when you prove that you're not the fool, um, it has a lot more impact than if you're always the one who's trying to prove, who's, who's, um, who's proving that they're so damn smart all the time, right? Um, and uh, you can really to catch people off guard. And uh, there's certain ways to use that to your advantage, too. So, uh, I don't know, I'm just rambling. That's just my, my rant for tonight. It's about midnight, and I just thought I'd, I'd get my thoughts out in this kind of video journal type of format. But uh, anyway, I am signing off now. Hope uh, at least uh, half of that made sense. So, all right, good night.